York Castle Museum stands on a site that has seen a lot of change. In AD 71, the Romans understood the strategic significance of this place, where the rivers ooze and foss meet, for controlling the north. Later, the Saxons and then the Vikings would discover this too and claim it for their own. But that's just where the story begins. A story of invasion, death, royalty and rebellion. A story that tells the significance of this place, not only in the history of York, but of England and the world. Just like those before him, William the Conqueror knew that if he controlled York, he could control the north of England. In 1068, fresh from securing his power base in the south, William travelled north, invaded York, and built the first castle on this site, completely out of wood. More than 200 years and several rebuilds later, it was still the seat of royal power in 1244, when King Henry III rebuilt the royal castle and palace in stone, complete with all the mod cons. It wasn't all pomp and circumstance, though, as the castle saw its fair share of bloodshed over the years. In 1190, York's Jewish community, seeking protection from an anti-Semitic mob, became trapped in the keep. Those that tried to escape were murdered, and those that stayed took their own lives, setting fire to their possessions and burning down the keep. It was one of the darkest events in the castle's and the country's history. That wasn't the end of the violence, though. In 1537, a leader of the Pilgrimage of Grace, an infamous Tudor uprising against King Henry VIII, was imprisoned and executed here. And the castle saw more action during the British Civil Wars when the city was besieged in 1644. In 1701, work began on building a new county jail and debtor's prison within the bailey of the castle. It was completed in 1705, and to ease overcrowding, building began on a women's prison in 1780. Overseen by renowned neoclassical architect John Carr, these instantly became visitor attractions for George and York. Over the years, the castle housed some high-profile inmates from infamous highwayman Dick Turpin to Chartists, Luddites, Jacobites and Quakers. During this period, the debtors' prison also housed transportees sentenced to exile in the American colonies, Australia and Tasmania. The county jail was converted to a military prison in 1898 before closing completely in 1929. The site was sold to the corporation and the empty building proved the prime location for a new museum. That's when the pioneering Dr. John Kirk of Pickering entered the scene. Kirk was interested in capturing a world he thought was disappearing, so he collected objects of everyday life and, in his museum, transported people back in time with the creation of the famous Victorian street, Kirkgate. From a castle that controlled the north of England, an emblem of royal power, sovereignty, law enforcement and oppression, to a museum that captures the history of everyday life. There's quite a story to tell about this place. Help us keep telling it for generations to come.